Madam President, I, I appreciate uh, being here in the chamber to hear the comments uh, from my friend, the senator from New Hampshire. As she has noted, there's a small handful of, of states that, for a host of different reasons, have chosen not to impose a sales tax on, on their residents. And as she has very well stated, um, this so-called Marketplace Fairness Act is really not fair. It's really not fair to those states that uh, have put in place other mechanisms. And yet what we are doing it, through, through this legislation that we have pending on the floor right now is to tell states like New Hampshire, to tell states like, like Alaska that regardless of what your state chose to do, those who are engaged in, in online uh, sales and activity, you're going to be scooped into the requirements of whatever state the, the individual purchasing your product is. To me, Madam President, that, that is absolutely not fairness within the marketplace. I think the people in Alaska, when they think about their, their marketplace, they're, they're looking at where they are and, and assuming that their state's laws uh, are going to be what they're dealing with. So I, I, I thank the, the Senator for her comments and in laying out, I think, very well uh, how this measure impacts these few states. And maybe that's our problem here. Maybe we just don't have enough of us in terms of, of those states that have, have opted to uh, not move forward with a sales tax. Um, we are at a point in the evening where um, just had a vote to, to move. We're told that we're going to be taking this measure up when the, the Senate returns in about a week. Uh, but it's my understanding that at this point in time, there will be no amendments allowed, despite the efforts of many of my colleagues to help address this, to help bring about some fairness into this legislative measure. And, and we won't be allowed to do that. So it is, it, it's a real challenge today as, as we discuss this, recognizing that um, these few states might be dis impacted disproportionately uh, in a way that um, I think does not demonstrate any level of, of fairness. Um, Will the senator yield for a question? Certainly. I'm happy my, to yield to my friend. My Sen friend the senator from New Hampshire. Uh, my friend from Alaska and I, um, as she's pointed out, represent states, neither of which have a sales tax. And, and would you agree with me that if this passes, it sets a dangerous precedent that says that um, at any point this Congress could impose on um, states like ours, despite of what we've chosen to do in our home states, um, a tax that we may totally disagree with and, and that that's a very dangerous precedent for us to set? I, I would, would absolutely uh, agree. As, as you point out, it's Alaska, Oregon, Montana, Delaware, New Hampshire uh, who are in this situation. And basically, if this legislation were to pass, it's, it's a message to those within these states that it doesn't make any difference what your state laws are with regards to a state sales tax. It doesn't make any difference because we've made this directive back here that, uh, that there's going to be uniform application out here. I have a tough time with that. I think um, uh, our states may be somewhat similarly situated in the sense that a real sense of, of states' rights, state sovereignty. Uh, I believe your, your motto is live free or die. Um, we feel pretty independent uh, up north as well. And I do feel that this is, this is a real hard push against states' rights and their ability to, uh, to impose local taxes within their state boundaries. So I am very concerned about the direction that we have taken. Um, Madam President, I, I, uh, I, I note 
that, again, the states without sales tax and use taxes, like these five states that my colleague and I have been talking about, and who are not members of the streamlined sales and use tax agreement, that this legislation really creates an inherent unfairness. And, and again, I do think it's somewhat ironic that the bill sponsors uh, chose to call it the Marketplace Fairness Bill. Um, we, have, we have noted here on the floor what the requirements under this legislation would, would mean, and, and Senator Shaheen from uh, New Hampshire has indicated you know, exactly what it means to, to a small business. But a, a, a remote seller in Alaska that makes an online sale to someone in, in Vermont who's a member of the Streamline Sales and, and Use Tax Agreement will have to comply, collect, and file a return in the state of Vermont. The seller otherwise has zero connection to, to Vermont. So it really does beg the question, is this fair? And I would contend not. Does this present uh, a burden on interstate coverage? Absolutely. Absolutely. The drafters of this bill will argue that it creates no new taxes, but I would also respectfully disagree on that. This bill essentially forces states like ours to adopt its requirements to ensure parity. Now, currently, no states can impose its local sales tax on another uh, short of meeting constitutional nexus requirements. So we've, we've made clear that you can't do that. Well, this legislation, again, just kind of scoops everybody in. States who wish to enter into agreements with other states for this purpose are able to do so. But let those individual states decide whether or not they want to participate in the streamlined sales and use tax agreement, but don't mandate it. Don't mandate it. And that's what this measure would do. Only 24 states could agree to do this. So you want to, you, you have to ask, is, is that, is 24 states uh, a mandate for Congress? I don't think so. Again, it begs the question, is this fair? Absolutely not, and how this law presents a backdoor mandate to states like Alaska, like New Hampshire, uh, to, to, to effectively adopt a sales tax. I think that Congress has to respect a state's rights to determine how to implement and how to enforce its tax laws and not impose how it must do so. Now, you've mentioned the, the, the burden on, on small business owners, Madam President. Uh, and, and spoke to uh, an article that detailed um, some of the concerns. Uh, this, is, this is an issue that has generated um, considerable interest in, in my state. I've had over 600 constituents who have written to me in opposition to this bill. A couple of the examples of the, of the mail that I'm getting, I've got a constituent in Fairbanks, Alaska, who says, I'm a small businesswoman selling books off of my website, and I do not want to be a tax collector for other states. I especially don't want my customers running off to other non-tax parts of the world. And I've got another constituent who owns a, a business in Anchorage who writes, I do not support a measure that would allow individual states to collect sales taxes on any online purchases, regardless of which state an online retailer is located. As a small business owner, this legislation will affect me because I often have clients that start our transaction out of state, and we don't have the staff to handle collecting taxes for 50 states. And then finally, a constituent from Eagle River writes, as a former small business owner, I am very aware of the constant and increasing burden that governments subject our businesses to. Requiring online businesses to collect local sales taxes would be a horrendous administrative burden that would undoubtedly call, cause many businesses to fail. Governments at all levels should be trying to encourage businesses to succeed rather than trying to squeeze every last dollar of revenue out of the businesses and their customers. Now, these are just three examples of some of the correspondence that I've received from folks who are worried about the burden that is going to inflict on our small business owners. And of course, we hear this from all of the other states, certainly heard it just now from, from the senator from New Hampshire. The states that I, uh, the, the communities that I mentioned we've been hearing from are, are all on the road system, as we call it in Alaska, are, are, are bigger communities. But in many, many of our rural communities, those that are off road, um, 
where economies are very limited. There's no major business. There's no big stores. We have been encouraging uh, folks in our villages to, to use the internet, internet to, to kind of bring the world marketplace to, to your door and, and to sell their products online and to, to sell, whether it's the arts and crafts or whatever it may be. Um, so we're encouraging them to do this. And now the concern that we're hearing is, I don't want to be the one that is the tax collector for California taxes. I don't, I'm, I'm trying to get myself up and going and uh, make a business, make an economy in a, in a very small area. And, and Madam President, I know there is, there is a carve out or an exception for the smaller businesses, and I think that that's critical. That's important. That's going to help the really, really small mom and pop operators. But I think we recognize it will have a burden on, on our small businesses, not only in Alaska, but uh, uh, around the country. The ability of a small business owner to comply with the reporting requirements that will be required by this bill, which would include the 50 states plus the District of Columbia and the U.S. territories, I think, I think it deters new startups. I think it, it acts as a, as, a, as, a, as a hurdle, if you will. And I don't think that our, our businesses need that, particularly now. We've already got regulatory burdens that our small businesses are, are concerned and worried about. I don't think we need to impose that on these states that have, again, made that determination that they would not uh, apply a sales tax within their state's boundaries. So for, for these reasons, Madam President, as well as so many of the reasons that have been outlined by others uh, on this floor earlier, I can't support this measure. Uh, we will see whether or not we've got the opportunity to have any amendments uh, in the week following. Uh, but again, uh, I felt it was important to express the concerns of, of many of the individuals that I represent in the state of Alaska.